Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. It's Mr. Chen. We're looking at the ambiguous case, and this one I think is from the PowerPoint. It's all ready to in triangle DEF. We have side D is 64 units, side F is 42 units, and angle F is 35 degrees. And in the PowerPoint, it actually walks you through it, but we're going to do this in class just to make sure we're okay. First thing, I think everyone agrees that this question here is not cosine law. We have two sides and a non contained angle. And the way that I would draw this, and hopefully I want to collapse the thing with me, notice I always, because I can, I can only do it this way, and I'm trying to give you that freedom, but for teaching purposes, this is the side that's always given there. And the angle I will make is in this corner. So this is angle F. So I've got that drawing here. That means side F is over here, that's going to be my 42. And we're just drawing a sketch, so we're not too sure exactly if this is true or not. But where am I going to put that 64? I think a lot of you know, I'm going to put 64 over here. That means this is angle D and this is angle E. And that's how we were trying to show you. With all the examples from our PowerPoint, from the cases that we looked at, this is the orientation. It makes your life a lot easier. So one more time, along the horizontal, put the angle in question here in this corner, and you put the other two slides how it looks. Okay. Because, just like when we talked about in our cases of ambiguous case, this side F is smaller than this side D. You can see that? And since this side is smaller than this, I would check against the height of this triangle. Let's use orange chalk if that's okay. I'll label H. I will erase it, but I think it'll make sense. And so to find the height of this triangle, really easy, it's going to be 64 times the sine of 35 degrees. Why am I doing this? I want to know whether or not if this 42 is too small, if it's the height, or if it has the capacity to actually form a second triangle, which is the ambiguous case. And if you're looking at the cases from our handouts, from the PowerPoints, we're really looking at case one, two, and three. Not four and five, and the reason why four was if it was isosceles, that'd have to be 64, it's not. And clearly this side is not longer than 64, so it's not the obtuse one, right? Everyone agree in the class? Understand? So can someone help me up in class using your calculator to make sure it agrees? 64 times sine of 35 degrees. You can give the one decimal place. 36.7. 36. 36.6? Okay, it's okay. It doesn't really matter. If you truncate around here, I don't mind. That's the height of the triangle. And what that tells us, since F is greater than the height. Therefore, two triangles is this. And so I'm going to redraw this triangle so that it's a little easier. Because I can work with one triangle, but students, I think, find it a little easier when they do it. So let's just draw it over here again one more time. So everybody can see it. That's our first triangle, the acute triangle. I'll call this case one. In case two, I'm hopefully drawing it almost the same way. That's 42. And when they ask you to solve the triangle, they're asking you to find everything, right? All the angles and all the sides. Let's just pause right now. Anyone from the class would like to ask me to clarify how we knew it was two triangles? The ambiguous, this is actually the case three of, of understanding the ambiguous case. This side can swing to this side. So this is also for you. See that? Because the height is small enough, right? It's not, this is not larger than the 42. If it was larger, this would be the dangling scenario, right? And it's clearly not 30, it's not 42, so it's not a right triangle. Everyone see that? Everyone okay? So, uh, why did you draw that the acute triangle instead of the acute triangle? I did. So no, the one in which it's like an exhaustion, so the other side would be 42. This is also 42. Notice it's gonna be a smaller. I can work with this triangle because, so the question is why did I draw the acute one rather than the obtuse one, ladies and gentlemen at home? I am drawing both. But it's easier for a lot of you to see the two cases. 
and you'll see why in a moment. Okay? Any other questions? Seriously, it's okay. So case one, I think everyone can actually do. It's not a big deal, but let's do this one all together. And I'll definitely show with our calculator. I'll actually do the calculation now. Thank you for the, by the way, the premium that way. I think everyone understands to solve this, I can't get angle E or side E. Everyone agree? I can't get that right away. Right? So everyone, I think, realizes we're going to probably solve for angle D first. How to do that? Really easy. The sine of D is over D is equal to uh, sine of F over F. And I might have to move the, the screen over, uh, the, the video. Doing a quick substitution, the sine of D over uh, 64 is equal to the sine of 35 over uh, 42. And then sine of D is equal to 64 times the sine of 35 over 42. Because I'm running out of room, maybe I'll move this over now. So I can see it. Apologize, Maria. Okay. And I'll just get angle B right away. Is that okay? Well, I'm just going to do this. Hopefully, you're doing it with me. Class, sine 64 times the sine of 35. Divide by 42, you get a ratio. Make sure you're in degrees, inverse sign of the answer. And someone hopefully can double check my work. 60.92 degrees, we'll do it to two decimal places. And the reason why I'm just doing that is for teaching purposes so that you get accuracy, right? And everyone can do this, right? Because it's, it's sign line. You've done it before in grade 10, right? It's not a big deal. So now we have angle D. Angle E is really relatively easy to solve. It's the interior sum, so 180 degrees minus uh, that 35 plus that 60.92. So I just like to go. And I notice I truncated. I didn't make you round that, right? Everyone agree? I didn't round that. I truncated. I'll talk more about in truncations later. Uh, but for teaching purposes, this is fine. 180 minus 35 minus 60.92. And so angle E is 84.08 degrees. So we have three angles and now two sides. The last side we have to solve. Let's just move this over really carefully. Is to solve for side uh, side E, right? So E over sine E. Sorry, and I like doing it this way. In the PowerPoint, it might just do it all the same. If I want to find an unknown, I usually like having it in the numerator, so it's just easy to manipulate, right? And some students would argue, well, which one does it matter to use? Should we use uh, sine, uh, sorry, D over sine D? Well, I like using what's provided, that ratio. In this case, F over sine F. Because those are the values that are given to me. Right? So just to rearrange really quickly, E is equal to uh, F. F is 42, right? Times the sine of our established answer is just 84.08 degrees all over the sine of F, which is 35. And I'll do that real quickly. 42 times the sine of 84.08 divided by the sine of 35 degrees. And then E is equal to 70.83 units. I guess I'm gonna double check that. Or do you agree? Okay, so that's for the acute triangle, right? And that's not that hard, right? The acute triangle, it's not a big deal. Okay, let's just pause there for a second, though. Hopefully I got there. Yep. 